The first thing we'll do is add a calculation so that we can see in any given month what the sales number was for the same month in the prior year. So let's get started with this first calculation which will look at the prior year sales given any year that we're looking at now. So we'll give that a name of last year sales. To get that number we'll use that calculate function that we've used before. And we can just choose the sales measure that we already have. And we want to calculate that given last year's number. So if I take the current row and move back one year, the way I do that is by specifying the date key to the date added function and tell it I want to move minus one years. And as I do that, I'll notice there's really no change down here. And perhaps this is sometimes the confusing part of making these calculations, because until we have some context that selects a slice, uh, we really can't see what the outcome is. But I'll, I know that I'll want this formatted the same way. So I have these both look the same, but I'm going to save my work. And then go to Excel. And in Excel, when I refresh the data, you'll see that additional measure will become available right away. And this is where I can select it into my pivot table and look and make sure that I'm getting the right number. And I can see that my January of 2008 number is 279 million and 269 million point eight refers to January of 2007. So I'll get a, a nice correspondence here. So I can see that that last year number is working. So let's just layer in uh, another one for year-to-date, very common, so year-to-date sales. Now this calculation uses a special function that we have available to us. Now we don't have to use this, we can generate this in some different ways, but here we can use a function called total year-to-date. And what total year-to-date does is it will add up the sales for the year-to-date based on the uh, the date key that I'm working with and I need to get the table in there. There we go. Now this is a bit special because total year to date knows that I want to take the set of dates that are year to date ending with the last date in the row that I have in context, which is a little bit confusing, but let's take a look at that in Excel and I'll explain that. It'll make more sense this way. So here's my year-to-date sales. Oops, I didn't format that. I always like to get a nice readable format. Currency, no decimals, same as the rest. Save, refresh, better. So what uh, total year-to-date does is, on this row, and always keep in mind our context. Our context for this row is the second month of uh, 2008. So. So what the total year-to-date function will do is it will find the last date key in February of 2008 and then it will build a list of dates beginning at the beginning of the year until that last date and add up sales for that date range. So there's a number of things that are going on in there. The nice thing about the total year-to-date, total month-to-date is, is they kind of do that set uh, calculation for you. So very nice. So let's look at a growth numbers and one of those might be year-over-year um, year sales percent and that's going to be a straightforward calculation of the uh, sales Just need my colon there so that's going to be sales minus last year sales and I do need parentheses to make sure the subtraction is done before this division of last year sales and again, it says zero, uh, there's no context, so it can't really evaluate that to anything. But I'm going to add a percentage. And then finally, I'd like to add a uh, year over year growth for my year to date sales. In order to do that, first I'll need to create a measure for my last year year to date sales. And that's going to be very similar to what we did for last year sales. 
So we'll use the calculate function for that. Year-to-date sales. And then date add, again, we're kind of doing a date subtract here, but there's no date subtract function, so we use date add minus one. Minus one year. And then ends the calculate. Again, that's blank because the context within the design environment here doesn't really give me uh, give me any results. But I can still prepare for this by formatting that, and that will give me my final calculation that I'll do today, which is year to date, year over year, year to date sales percent. In other words, are my year to date numbers going up compared to a parallel period last year or not. And that's going to be year-to-date sales minus last year year-to-date sales divided by last year year-to-date sales. I know my format is going to be a percentage and for these percentages one decimal places plenty. So that completes my calculations and you know, notice I can put these in any cell I want. They'll just be added uh, to the measure group sales. Go to Excel. They're not here yet. Click refresh. There's my last year year to date. My year over year sales number. My year over year to date sales number. So what I can see is my year to date sales for March of 2008 is 858.3 million for the year to date for March of 2007 was 868.538 and that's lower by 1.2 percent this year versus last year. So those are our basic approach to year-over-year -year calculations, year-to-date calculations and you can see how simple that becomes to define within the tabular data model so the the modeling work that we've done up to this point has enabled us to go really fast on generating these kinds of measures and statistics for our users to just use directly within Excel.